When Julie Briskman gave President Trump's motorcade the finger last month, she did not expect her action to go viral on social media. But it did, and it cost her the job that she had just landed about six months before. Joining us live on the Coco News Live Line is SDSU business ethics lecturer Dan Eaton. And Dan, she worked for a government contracting firm. She also worked in social media. So, I mean, is she protected with free speech? Not a great combination, LaDonna. She uh, actually worked for a company that oversees government contractors, and they said, uh, that's really not really good for business. You talked about the fact that she was fired. She was actually forced to resign. Now, she made this gesture at the president's motorcade. That probably prevents the government from doing anything against her. It's probably constitutionally protected political speech, but that has nothing to do with her private employer. We know the government can't do anything against her because of a case called Cohen versus California, where a conviction for disturbing the peace was overturned against a California man who wore a jacket to a Los Angeles courtroom that said, F the draft. And uh, the Supreme Court majority, Justice uh, Harlan, said in his majority opinion, quote, one man's vulgarity is another's lyric, close quote. But that doesn't have any application to what a private employer can do. Now, here's the, the kind of the interesting twist to this. She went to her HR department, even though she didn't have to. And chances are, she said she wouldn't have been recognized because she was photographed from behind. So, And she didn't post it. Somebody else posted it. So should she have just kept her mouth shut and not gone to HR? Well, the answer to your last question, Ted, is yes, she probably should have kept her mouth shut. But she actually ended up, she actually did post it on her Facebook. She wasn't the one who initially posted it. It was posted by a news agency. Uh, but it was somebody who was trying to seize her 15 minutes of fame. And uh, that got her into trouble, obviously. So, yes, yeah, she probably should have kept her mouth shut. And this probably would have blown over. And she would have been the anonymous cyclist. But then she wouldn't be as famous. And we wouldn't be saying her name on a San Diego radio station this morning. Well, and she wouldn't have a somebody started a GoFundMe page with what 15 grand in it already and and uh, good lord she's got job offers well and that's right and that's what you see happening in, in all of these kinds of episodes remember the google software engineer who said those uh, comments about uh, female tech there's always going to be someone on the other side that's willing to uh, to pick up the slack for someone who makes a, a kind of comment that's broadly offensive to a lot of people okay so bottom line she doesn't have a case you don't think against her employer Probably not. It's interesting in California, uh, you can't, uh, no, an employer cannot have a rule that controls or directs the political activities or affiliations of its employees. But that doesn't mean you have an unlimited right about the manner and means in which you express your political views. In this case, no matter where she lives, she probably doesn't have a case for being forced to resign for making a gesture that violated the company's social media policy. A company that oversees government contractors and the president is the CEO of the government, after all. Not a good idea. Now, forced to resign, I find that interesting. Um, why, how can you force somebody to resign? Don't you have to fire them or ask them to resign? No, what you can say is either you resign or you're fired, and that's a forced to resign. And what happens, uh, LaDonna, is that if uh, that forced resignation violates public policy, it's the same as if you were fired. It's what's called a wrongful constructive discharge. But as we've discussed already this morning, there wasn't anything wrongful probably about this. She probably doesn't have a legal uh, case to say uh, it was illegal, my being forced to resign, even if it's the equivalent of my being fired. Okay, and that's still tough because if you're fired, can't you collect unemployment? But if you resign, you can't. Not, but Ted, let's be clear. If you resign voluntarily, you cannot be, uh, you cannot collect unemployment. But if you're forced to resign and you're forced to resign for having nothing to do with misconduct, you still can collect unemployment. It's the equivalent of though you were forced out the door. That's an important distinction. But you're right. Generally, if you voluntarily resign, no unemployment benefits. But if you're forced to resign and there wasn't any wrongful conduct behind it, then maybe you can. In this case, this misconduct may prevent her from getting unemployment, but it's not because she resigned. You know, Dan, neither we one of us knew that. Know that. that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good to that's, know. That's very interesting well, I hope neither one of you is facing unemployment in the near future. Well, well, not, well not, that, not, that not that we, we know of. of. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. Dan Eaton, who is an SDSU business ethics lecturer and attorney. We appreciate it.